Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. I, I always thought it was Neurablina Gomai, but I looked it up and apparently it isn't. But uh, that still means Happy New Year in my book. You're welcome to this service of Epiphany, when we recall the visit of the wise men and their revelation as to who, what, and why Jesus is. We begin with a few words from Matthew. But blessed are your eyes because they see and ears because they hear. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Amen. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. The prayer for today. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations, to be praised and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, and that we may witness your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm going to light the candle for today. There's only one candle because it's the epiphany of Jesus. We say together, O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifest your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. As with joy they hailed its light, leading onwards, beaming bright. So, most gracious God, may we evermore be led to thee. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket but on a lampstand and gives light to all the house. As we do each Sunday, as we come before God and we begin the week, as Sunday is actually the first day of the week, we begin our week by returning to God's will and to God's ways. The grace of God has dawned upon us, the world through the Savior, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us and purify us as a people as his own. In silence, we reflect before God. We say together, O oh God, our loving Heavenly Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you, we have often been selfish, and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our first song today. Can you please stand?
please be seated. The collect for today. Radiant morning star, you are both guidance and mystery. Visit our rest with disturbing dreams and our journeys with strange companions. Graze us with the hospitality to open our hearts and homes to visitors filled with unfamiliar wisdom, bearing profound and unusual gifts. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Ephesians. Thank you, Elsie. The reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given to me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to mankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see that it is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety may now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now come to Psalm 72. Let's use the words we find on the screen as it might be slightly different from what you have on your sheet. Give the king your justice, O God, we say together and the righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your peoples with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people and give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. And may the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From the oppression and violence, he renders their life, redeems their life and precious is their blood in his sight. May, long may he live. May the gold of Sheba be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually and the blessings invoked from him all day long. Amen. Our new, other New Testament reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In the time of King Herod, was, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star is rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together the chief priests and the scribes of the people, 
he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, learned from the exact, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me words so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star, that they had seen it is rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening the treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left to their own country by another word, road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray, Lord, as we come to your word, you might give us eyes to hear, ears to hear, eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to respond to you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, I want to begin with a question. What did we do before we had all the signs that we have these days, the road signs, the warning signs that we have here in church about COVID? Surely there were other things that pointed the way and instructed us, and of course there were before we had such signs. And our gospel reading, our good news reading, is full of signs. The first and most obvious is the Star of Bethlehem. We in our days of science don't tend to look to the heavens and to creation as signs of God. But of course, the whole of creation speaks of God, not least the stars. And the wise men were watching the rising of the star. We don't know what exactly it was, whether it was a comet or a star, but it led them to first Jerusalem and then on to Jesus. So they were alert that God was doing something special. So the first of the signs is the star of Bethlehem, for we have observed his star of rising and have come to pay him homage. It's most likely the wise men were not Jews, because the next sign that we have is they come to Jerusalem to hear from the scribes, the priests, and the elders of the faith of Israel, the Jewish faith. And they read from Isaiah, which is quoted here in Matthew. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd, to rule my people Israel. Now while Herod and his cronies are fearful because their place, their rightful place as king is questionable, and the rightful king has been born, and we know Herod is trying to scheme and plan, but thankfully the wise men are wise and they don't return to Herod. But they go to the people of Israel to say, where is your king to be born? And God has given them signs through his word, as he does to these days. And then we come to the third of the signs, or three signs in total, of the gifts. And they open their treasure chests and they offer him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And I do believe that these, these gifts were chosen for their symbolism. They are signs pointing to Jesus. Gold frankincense, which is a resin from the tree, and myrrh, an oil used for embalming. So the three symbols symbolize Jesus' nature, his purpose, and his role. Gold symbolizes wealth, power, and kingship. And even though Jesus did not actually have much earthly wealth, he was king of kings. You'll remember many years later before Pilate, he says, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus essentially says yes but he says my kingdom is not of this earth so the wise men are recognizing that even this little baby is a king incense is used for prayers frankincense and at the time of jesus the temple would have still been standing and the senses would have been filled with incense symbolizing the prayers of the people of god rising up to god it is only god who you pray to so they recognize that jesus is of god and then myrrh is used at the anointing at death. And it was used, presumably, late, much, much later, when Jesus was taken down from the cross. We're told so little about the wise men, but it's tantalizing to think of how wise they were, 
They didn't just follow a star, they came with gifts that spoke of who Jesus is, King, who he is as God, and who he, what he has, purpose he has done to bring us healing through the cross and forgiveness. They are certainly wise indeed to see these things before we even get to see these things. We now move to the reading from Ephesians, and you might remember that during Christmas I used a greater than or less than sign, thanks to a friend who shared these thoughts with me. Today I'm going to introduce you to a new symbol, the therefore symbol, the three dots, therefore. So therefore, Paul is a witness of and for Jesus. You'll remember Paul uh, didn't get his revelation through being with Jesus during those many years on the road, Capernaum and Galilee and the Lake of Galilee and so forth. He only had his witness much later on the road to Damascus. So he is very appropriately, for the sake of you Gentiles, he's a witness for us of Jesus Christ. And Gentiles are you and me, because I don't think any of us here are born Jewish by birth. And yet, through Jesus, God saves us, that's what his name means, and we're adopted into the family, and we become part of the family of God. And we don't do it by our works, we don't do so by our birth, obviously. So it's God's grace that was given for me, says Paul, for you. And grace is unmerited favor of God. God has given us his son before we even thought or responded to him. Therefore, Paul has seen the signs of who Jesus is, and he is a witness. He's a witness to the mystery. He's made known through revelation. God has revealed to Paul and through Paul what he is doing, who this Jesus is, and what it's about. Paul has had a revelation. The penny has dropped. The light bulb has gone on. And the church is a word for that. It's called epiphany, a sudden or divine revelation. So the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body. Now we are adopted through the blood of Jesus. We can also claim Abraham as our spiritual father. We're part of the nation of Israel spiritually through Jesus. It's amazing that we can be adopted in. Paul is still therefore a witness of and for Jesus, and he, makes, he helps to make everyone see the mystery hidden for ages. You'll probably remember that there was 400 years between the last prophecy before Jesus was born. It seemed that God had gone silent, but he hadn't gone silent or gone away. Oftentimes people will ask where God is. God is there through you and me as his witness. We have his word, we have creation. You'll remember, for example, the rainbow, God's covenant to Noah and to those who follow him, that he would never again flood the whole earth. So through the church, the wisdom of God might be made known in accordance with his eternal purpose. So the church is the assembled people of God, which I pray you and I are, that his wisdom will be made known in us and through us, according to his purposes. So God has willed it that we would be saved, but he desires that through us, others may come to know and also may be saved. He does this in and through Jesus, the anointed one, the Christ. And the most amazing thing is that unlike before Jesus, where there was a temple and there was a sacrifice of animals and so forth, Jesus, through his blood on the cross, has opened us access to God. Remember the temple curtain tore off from top to bottom, symbolizing there was now no longer a barrier for those who are in Christ. And we can be in bold and we can be confident through faith in him that we can approach God. This is the, and this is the greatest gift, the greatest sign that can be ever seen. So the signs are there for us to see, the wise men saw, Paul saw, I pray that we will see. And that through him, Jesus, we can indeed see God, we will know God, and we will turn to him. But also God never gives us these gifts of grace just for ourselves to hoard. They are to be shared, shown, and given to others. So I am one, but you are many. And God's intention is that all of us, especially those joining in this service, would be witnesses to who and to what and to why Jesus is for others. 
a short reflection on the nature of us as witnesses in God's purpose. When you hear the word witness, you might think of someone who sees something shocking or important and then shares their testimony with others. The word witness is used like this in the Bible too, but here's what's really fascinating. This word actually helps us understand the entire storyline of scripture. In the Bible, a witness is basically someone who sees something important or amazing. In Hebrew, this person is an aide, and in Greek, a martus. And if this person begins to share what they've seen, we call this bearing witness, in Hebrew, oud, and in Greek, martyreo. So in the story of Ruth, when Boaz buys land from Naomi's family, he calls together witnesses to see the transaction so that if there's a later dispute about the land, they can bear witness about what they saw. So that's the basic meaning of the word witness. Now, if we follow this idea throughout the Bible, we learn that God wants a group of witnesses, people who see and experience him to ood or represent him to the world. So beginning with the story of the Exodus, the people of Israel witness Yahweh as the powerful king of the nations when he rescues them from slavery. Then he appoints this one nation to bear witness or ood to the rest of the nations about what they experienced. He calls them a kingdom of priests or people who connect all other nations to Yahweh, the true God and king. But there's a big problem. The Israelites aren't good witnesses. In fact, they start worshiping other gods. So God raises up a chief witness, Moses, to ood or bear witness to the people who are supposed to be the real witnesses. When Moses meets with Yahweh on Mount Sinai, he sees and experiences God face to face. When he comes down, he oods, he bears witness to the people about his experience. He even writes a song as a witness so that they would never forget how God has cared for and rescued them. But as the story goes on, Israel does forget. They fail to truly see God, so they fail as his witnesses. So God raises up prophets who are like Moses to ood, to open their eyes to who their God really is. Like Isaiah, he has a vision of God as the cosmic king, and he's sent to ood to bear witness to the Israel of his day because they're blind, they're corrupt, and they don't recognize God as their king. So Isaiah says that one day, God will raise up the ultimate chief witness, a figure called the servant. He will open the eyes of the blind so that they can truly see Yahweh and bear witness to the nations that their God is the king who will rescue the world. And now, when we turn to the story of Jesus, we find him claiming to be that servant and witness spoken of by Isaiah. He's the ultimate witness, or in Greek, the martus. Crowds of people witness him saying that he's bringing God's kingdom, that it's here right now through him. They see Jesus healing people, even restoring sight to the blind. Many recognize who he is and respond to his message, but many others still refuse to truly see. Even the nation's leaders won't listen to him. Rather, they kill Jesus for bearing witness to God's kingdom, that is, for being a martus. In fact, this is where the word martyr comes from. But then, after Jesus' death, something amazing happens. Jesus' friends see him alive from the dead, and they recognize that he is the divine king, Yahweh himself, who has come to rescue the world. After that, Jesus sends them out to martyreo, that is, to bear witness to the nations, to open their eyes to this risen king who has conquered death and who offers freedom and rescue and the hope of a new creation. And it's this story about Jesus that's been spread all around the world by faithful witnesses. And to this day, when someone hears the story of Jesus and experiences the love of God for all humanity, the most natural thing to do is to simply bear witness. So may we indeed bear witness that Jesus, in and through and because of Jesus, God saves us and can save others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you to Elsie for leading us in our prayers. Let us pray. With gratitude to God our Father for the gift of Christ, let us draw near to him in prayer, asking for his goodness and his mercy for the church, the world, and for all who need his loving kindness and forgiveness. Jesus, light of the world, you came into our world bringing your promises of grace and freedom for all of mankind. We pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to guide your church as it begins 2022. 
we rejoice in the great body of people who form your church and to whom we are thankful to belong. We pray for Christians everywhere, and especially for those who follow you in parts of the world where your message of salvation brings persecution and the threat of violence and even death. Help us as members of the body of Christ to be united in love and respect for one another, to work and pray for a better world, to proclaim your salvation, and to pray under the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Today, as we remember in our prayers the worldwide church, we pray in particular for the Anglican Church in the Congo, where church leaders and members frequently come under violent attack from Islamic followers. We ask your blessing and guidance for Bishop Andrew as he leads the church in this diocese into another year. We pray for the diocesan office staff, Mr. Gavin Harkin, diocesan secretary, Mr. Paul McFadden, diocesan communications officer, Mrs. Sarah McBruton, Bishop secretary, and Mr. Gordon Robison, office caretakers, and for their families, that God would guard them and build them up in love and service. We pray for Reverend Adam and all who serve your church in this diocese. We know, Lord, that the coming year will bring significant changes and challenges for all clergy. We pray that you will pres be present with them as they take the next steps along their journey of faith, leading others to you while supporting and encouraging their congregations on their spiritual, spiritual journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we have heard the Christmas story about how you came to live among us through the birth of Christ, your son. You gave him a sign to guide the peoples of this world, just as you sent a star to guide the wise men to worship him. Help us to try to understand what this means in our lives as we embrace the challenges of serving you as members of your church and these and the combined congregations going forward in 2022. Lord, help us to set aside some time to reflect back on how the light of your presence has impacted on our lives during the past year. Let us be grateful and give thanks for all we have received from you directly and through the faith of others. We pray for wisdom and courage in the year ahead. Strengthen us as a congregation to be committed witnesses to your love. We pray for wisdom and courage. Bless us and keep us as we faithfully seek to walk in your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your creation, which you have entrusted us with. We are sorry we have not cared for your world in the way you intended us to do. We pray that as we learn more about the climate crisis, that we will be willing to play our part. As we go forward, help us as best we can to understand what is necessary for us to do in caring for your planet and everyone living in it. God of peace, your son Jesus warned us of wars and rumors of wars. We pray for places where there is war or political conflict, where there is violence or oppression, and especially where people live in fear for their lives. We remember those living under oppressive regimes, as we pray especially for the people of Afghanistan, the Sudan, and other parts of the world. And we pray especially for those who seek to make peace in this divided world. Bless and protect all those who have fled their homeland in fear for their safety due to political, religious, or cultural intolerance and violence. We remember those who have sought safety in other countries or are living in refugee camps. Give wisdom to world leaders as they seek to find ways to provide safety and shelter for those in need. And may we always appreciate people's values and seek to respect each human life which you have created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, as we start another new year, help us to give thanks for all we hold dear, our families, our friends, our neighbours, 
and our health. We thank you for the past, the past year, Father God, as we face into the unknown of the coming year. At a difficult and painful time for the world, which has suffered the pandemic for almost two years, we thank you for walking through the good days and the bad days with us, and we are grateful for your steadfast love. The pandemic has been exhausting in so many ways, and we give thanks for all the ways friendship and relations, relationships have sustained us in uncertain times. As we face the year ahead, we ask your spirit to guide us into the future where there is so, so much uncertainty. May we continue to seek your strength and guidance in the, each challenge we will face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, we pray for all those who suffer in love and body, mind or spirit. May their pain be eased and may they find the strength to endure. Comfort them with your presence and help them to hold on to the knowledge that your son understood the pain of human suffering. We pray for all who are suffering the effects of COVID-19, especially those in our intensive care units fighting for their lives. We pray for our hospitals, administration and medical staff as they face the very real danger of being overwhelmed in the coming days and weeks. We give thanks and pray for the work and devotion of nurses and doctors who, in spite of physical and mental exhaustion, continue to use their skills and compassion to bring both physical and spiritual comfort and need to those in need. We pray for all who are anxious and fearful due to escalation of the virus in our community. We bring before you those who are most in need of our prayers in our, the community, the elderly, the housebound, and those in care. We ask your loving compassion on all those lives who have been marred by tragedy of any kind during the past year, especially as a result of suicide, road traffic accidents, or premature death of a family member due to cancer or COVID-19. We pray for all who seek healing and hope. Lord Jesus, who, who while on earth responded to the needs of all who had faith, comfort and sustain those who are in need of your grace and healing at this time. We take a moment of silent prayer to bring before God those known to us who are unwell at present in our families or in the wider community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of eternity, your word, your word to, as to us is to look forward to a day when your kingdom shall come and your will be done, a time when there will be no more death or sorrow and every tear will be wiped from our eyes. Thank you, eternal Father, for all your faithful people we have known in our lives. We pray today for those struggling with loss and bereavement at this time, for those who have lost someone dear. And we think especially of families who have lost a loved one through road traffic accidents over the Christmas season. Lord, embrace them with your compassion and strength to persevere. May they not grieve as those who have no hope, but rejoice in the promise of Christ's res resurrection to life eternal. Lead them and us by the cross of Christ into the kingdom which you have prepared for all who have been redeemed by your precious death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, in spite of the present situation, may we greet this new year bravely, sure in the faith that while life changes around, around us, you are always the same guiding us with your wisdom and protecting us with your love. This and all our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Elsie. We'll come back to the Lord's Prayer. We'll say this prayer together first. Father, use us unworthy as we are to bring your kingdom of mercy, justice, love, and peace in us by your Spirit and unite us in your Son, 
that all our joy and delight may be to serve you now and forever. Amen. And this prayer of commitment you'll also find in your reading sheets if you want to return to it during the week. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Can you please stand as we affirm our faith and put our trust in God? Do you believe and trust in God, the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We remain standing for our final hymn or carol, very appropriately for the day, We Three Kings of Orient Are. Christ the Son be manifested to you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We say together.
we go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Amen. So, Happy New Year, and keep well and keep safe. God bless.